Hello everyone. Uh, just want to make a follow-up video on the uh, PWM controller that I made, and I finished it, and I've got it running through a resistor now. Um, there's the output of it. Uh, you can't really tell, but the thing is glowing. It's a 6.6 .6 ohm resistor with that much voltage going through it, so you get the idea of how much power that has. And just want to demonstrate this a little better. Turn it up. And turn it down. All the way off. <coughs> so, just want to show you a little bit of it. It's a pretty simple machine, and I'll explain a little more how it works in a minute, but uh, input circuit breaker, rectifier, uh, contactor, cooling fan, capacitor bank, that there's a drive, it's for running a fan, uh, power supply actually out of a PC, and IGBT and gate driver down there, probably can't see that very well, but actually it's a uh, just something I designed for use in an electric car for running a heater or actually for running a DC motor too it can it has that capability um, it's a very simple uh, setup and it works uh, pretty reliable as far as I've tested it I haven't pushed it towards its limits uh, push it up to 50 amps uh, 340 volts it seems to work decently so I'm going to show you a little bit about how it works so basically it's just this 555 circuit a little modified Let's see if I can do this instead of using a MOSFET here take that off take that out and instead of 12 volts make that 5 volts. Now the output there oh and take these diodes off too. Get rid of them. Okay now instead of going to instead of taking the output of the 555 timer going into a MOSFET go into the uh, input of an IGBT gate driver with 5 volts and that 5 volts is going to come from a computer power supply uh, the black wire and the red wire and then for the gate driver it's also powered from the computer power supply from 17 volts and the way that works is simple it's the uh, blue wire which is negative 12 volts and the red wire which is positive 5 volts so that gives a 17 volts for the uh, IGBT gate driver which is pretty reasonable for driving an IGBT gate and the interesting thing about this is what the computer power supply can do for it um, and it's easy to do to use this uh, computer power supply in a DC system just in case you're wondering you know if I can use it in DC how do I get the AC to power that well it's easy um, inside on these power supplies there's a, a rectifier which actually converts the incoming AC into DC anyway so what I did was I unsoldered that took it out and in, instead of supplying it with AC now I supply it with DC where the rectifier converted it to DC and I just have it tied in through those wires there into that capacitor bank so the incoming DC feeds the capacitors which then feeds the power supply the other interesting thing about that is it makes a nice automatic pre-charge circuit. So the incoming power first comes in through this resistor here and this other one over here. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of small down in the dark. And it goes through these wires and it bypasses this contactor. And the contactor is then in turn hooked to the computer power supply's 12 volt rail. So when you turn the switch on, the power charges up through these resistors, charges up this capacitor bank, 
And once it gets to the right voltage to turn the power supply on, the power supply then powers the contactor, which in turn then turns on the machine in full power. So, and then about the IGBT and how to wire that. This is a wiring diagram of the MG100 and this is a dual IGBT module but I'm only using one and I'll explain that. So on this dual IGBT module you have E2 common emitter C1 common collector so you put the capacitor bank negative there sad negative and the capacitor bank positive on C1 also very sad positive and you put your load between C2 E1 negative there and your loads positive on C1 now on an actual IGBT module that kinda looks like this there's a C1 right there that one that's C1 there's E2 so the capacitor bank positive here negative here and then for your load you be load negative here load positive here and that's exactly what I have going on that's exactly how it works and then the gate you only want to drive gate 2 and emitter 2 the other one short circuited and what does that do that makes it so that you can use just this diode so when you have your load negative here and load positive here now you've got that uh, freewheeling diode there so you can run a motor from that, a heater from that, basically anything that takes DC you can run it from that IGBT module. So now I want to show you the startup process of this. It's really easy. Turn off the switch and it's automatically going to pull the capacitor bank down since again that computer power supply is using the power from the capacitor bank to run. It'll take a while but I'll pull it down. Let's just watch and see what it does. Oh yeah, and the computer power supply it also runs uh, these fans. And it's off. Now to turn it on, it's easy. The same thing. Turn the switch back on, and it's going to run through those resistors, charge up the capacitors, and turn, turn on the power supply, and drop the contactor in. So, there it started. And it's charged up just like that, and it's all ready. It didn't take very long to pre-charge it with the right resistors. Um, now, all you have to do to start this is really easy. I'm just turning the meter on here, show what it's doing. All you have to do to get a DC output, turn the potentiometer up. And the way that this circuit works, the circuit right here it increases frequency as it increases pulse width so that ringing noise you're hearing is actually the switching frequency uh, it's making the uh, heater shake heater coil shake so as you increase it it also increases frequency it increases pulse width and frequency at the same time and it gives you pretty much any voltage you want so it's kind of like a variac except with DC power instead of AC power. It's just pulse width modulation. And it gives you any voltage basically from 0 up to 340 volts DC. I'm not going to do that on this resistor because that would actually be dumping more than 12 kilowatts in and that's a kind of a lot of power. And that resistor will get really red hot if I did that too and run up the bill and probably burn the place down. But there you go. Simple, easy to make. Uh, probably my first electronic project that I actually finished.
when you hear my cheap circuit breaker. So, just a couple ideas. You could probably put that in an electric car to run a DC motor and potentiometer there, make it uh, the gas pedal. Obviously, buy a pot box for it. And the more you push it, higher cost with you get. Good idea to run that. Uh, simple, cheap. Uh, one other thing while I'm at it is if anybody. In a foreign country is watching this, or anybody in the U.S. that doesn't know, a lot of people, they assume that in the U.S. there's only 120. Well, most appliances, they are 120, yes, but there's also 240. I'll show you how that works. So this is a circuit breaker panel, and there's usually three wires uh, coming in, plus the ground. Um, that was really bad lighting, but up here, there's a main breaker there and there's two bus bars. This red wire here is one side and the black is the other. It's the center tap transformer. So the red's got 120 volts and the black has also got 120 volts. Then over here you can't see it barely but there's a neutral bus in there. So when you put these breakers in, if you connect a live wire to one of the single breakers and then you connect the neutral wire to the neutral bar that gives you 120. But if you want 240, you put in a double breaker or you could just use two single breakers, which is not recommended because it creates a lot of ground problems. Uh, if there's a ground fault, only one of them will trip, the other one will still be dangerous. So not recommended, but get a double pole breaker and it's going to use both of them lines. It's going to use 120 volts here. 120 volts here and that's going to give you 240 volts AC 60 cycles so it isn't the same frequency but it is still 240 volts and that's how this uh, my little project's working right now and that 50 amp double pole breaker comes down these wires and goes in so there you go that's it and well capacitors in case you're wondering uh, really crappy camera, but it's Siemens uh, 6,000 6, microfarads, 450 volts DC, so it's got that negative there, so can't run it at the opposite polarity. Uh, interesting things will happen if you do, but very dangerous to do that. And also, capacitor banks. I'm going to put a video up of capacitors discharging so you're gonna see how dangerous these things are but anyways there you go do you want to make a cheap simple PWM controller that's the circuit that you need and I did get this from Google images so it's out there uh, it's not like I'm hiding it or anything um, it's, and it's not mine either I can't take credit for it it's not my circuit and so if you want to make a high-powered one you know get an IGBT and a gate driver computer power supply and it's pretty easy to do uh, if you just want some general purpose stuff like fans you can use that MOSFET um, not very high powered though so there you go hopefully you learned something that's it